Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to use the twirl tool and create a seamless repeating pattern, which looks something like this. So let's just get started. Let's create a new file. I'll go to file and new. I'll make this 4.5 into 4.5 inches. Let's make this CMYK. 300 and click create. Go to your line segment tool, click, hold your shift key down and drag to make a straight line. Now go to your twirl tool, that is right click and twirl tool. As you can see the brush size um, is very huge and that is not what we need. So if you double click, you see the options where you can set the width and height and let's decrease it a little bit. Click OK and you can see it's much tinier. So now we come to this point, click and hold till you have created a twirl that is good enough for you. Let's do the same thing here. All right, so the first part is ready. Now let's go ahead and click on our selection tool. Now right click, transform, rotate. Let's skew this 90 degrees and click on copy and then it makes something like this. Now let's click and select everything and click on center align, horizontal and vertical center align. If you cannot see align, it's under window and then align. Let's go ahead and uh, click on both these things by holding your shift key down and now click on your rotate tool and make sure this blue color pointer is right at the center and click, hold your option key down, shift key down and rotate so that it makes a perfect 45 degree angle and let go. Go back to your selection tool. Now we have a very nice kind of uh, design ready. And now let's go to our twirl tool again. And now make sure you're at the center of this design and then click and hold, click and hold to make a tiny warp kind of thing. Let me just do that. Okay, this looks better. Now select everything, Control C to copy, Control F to paste on top. Now get here, click Option, Shift and drag it inside to make it a little tinier. Like this. Now if you want, you can right click, Transform, Reflect and then you can do a Reflect which shows like this. And I think it's done. Now it's time to color these things. Now I'll just click and select everything. Go to my Stroke. If you cannot find it, it's under Window and then Stroke. Let's make it rounded cap and rounded corners. Let's change this to two. That's too thick. Let's undo that and I think this should be fine. Now go to your line stroke color and let's give it some color. All right, that sounds fine, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on these big ones over here and then increase the stroke. Let's make this 1.5 and see how it looks. Yes, much better. And now let's go ahead and go to your circle or ellipse tool, right click and ellipse tool, go to the center of this, click Hold your option key down, shift key down and drag it out to make a circle. Let's remove the stroke. For color, let's give black. And let's send it to back by pressing command shift and open square bracket. And we have to make sure it's in center and then center. Go back to your selection tool, click and select everything and press command G to group them together. Now go ahead and click on the line segment tool. Let's go to the center here, click and drag, holding your shift key to make a line. And for fill, let's give it black and let's change the stroke rounded, rounded. And let's make this a bit thicker, maybe three points. That should be okay. Now go to your ellipse tool, click, hold your option key down, shift key down and drag to make a circle, which should be black as well. I'll just make sure it is not, okay. Now click, hold your shift key down and then click on the black 
line segment and group them together by pressing command G. Now go to your rotate tool and make sure the orange, I mean the blue anchor is set to here and now we're going to click, hold your option key down, shift key down and then drag to make a copy. Now press command D to repeat the action. Now let's go ahead, go to your selection tool, hold your shift key to select all these things that we have created right now and press command G to group them together. Now come over here, click and rotate it a bit so that it goes and stands right in the center. Now you can see it's a little big, so it's kind of, um, how do you say, it's like not placed properly. I think I have to like move it up a little bit so that it's in center, okay. Now I'm going to click, hold my option key down, shift key down and drag it in a little bit so that it sits something like this. Again, you can see there's a bit of a weird gap, so I'll just move it so that it, it's exactly in the center. And I'll make this a little smaller. Now I'll click on this and send it to back by command shift and open square bracket. So your basic design is ready and now it's time to make another one. So click, hold your shift key and drag and make a tiny one. And now go to your twirl tool. It should cover the length of the twirl tool and, and make twirls. Now click on this, go back here and let's make it two point or yes. 2 point should be fine. No, 1.5 because this one was 1.5. So 1.5, okay. And then let's give it some color from our palette. Let's make a couple more. Hold your option key down, click and drag to make a copy. And let's color this. All right, so I'm just going to arrange this. It's okay because we're gonna modify this thing when we are trying out the pattern tool. All right, now click and make sure this whole thing is one group. So click on this one and click on the black design and then click Command G to group them together and that should be okay. Now click and select everything. Click on Object, Pattern and Make. Click OK. So the default is the grid pattern. As we know, you could use this and explore with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it to hex by column because I think this one looks much better and I'll just come over here and try to drag these things to make sure it looks much better. So I'll just drag it over here and this orange blob should come somewhere here. I'll reduce the size by holding my shift key down and I'll place it here. Still it's a little cramped. So let's try to adjust this so that the division line is not so far away. Okay, go back to this tool here and then you get, can edit this. So I'm just gonna bring this up here so that it's a little bit closer and then we don't have so much gap between elements. And let's do the same thing here and bring it a little closer. Okay, I think that should be okay. Go ahead and click on this again so that it's locked. And now let's try moving these things around. So I don't think I need this. I'm going to delete that. We'll work with the rest of the things that we have. The blue one fits there perfectly. Whereas this one, I think delete it. We can bring it back later if you want. So click and drag over here. And just rotate this a little bit so that it does not look exactly like this one right here. Okay. I think I want to adjust this a little bit. So I'll just go here and give it so that it's a little more closer. I think we're done with this here. Let's just go ahead and click on done. Now your pattern is actually ready. Now let's go ahead, go to our rectangle tool and create a really big artboard. And let's click no for fill, I mean for stroke, for fill, let's give it white. And now Control C to copy, Control F to paste on top, and go to your swatches. If you cannot see it, it's under window and then swatches, and then you'll have your pattern right here. And this is how you create a seamless pattern using the twirl tool. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And do subscribe to my newsletter because I give out some freebies every month. So 
I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.